Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, let's start off with another set of derivation for voltage reflection coefficient. And let's see how do we compute actually voltage reflection coefficient. So we're going to start off with this. We're going to start off with our basic circuit model. We have our load, we have our source resistance impedance, we have our load impedance, and this is the piece of wire that is connecting my source to my load. So we're going to start off with the, the equations that we have come up with. Uh, we start using it in last video, which is V of Z, which is given as V O plus E to the negative gamma Z. All right. So we're going to start off with this V O minus E to the gamma z i of z which is going to be i o plus e to the negative gamma z plus i o minus e to the gamma z we started off in our last video we started off with these two equations all right so now we're going to look at these equations in terms of uh, we're going to use these equations to drive voltage reflection coefficient and this is how we're going to do it so i know let's let's recall something else Gamma is alpha plus J beta. So in our last video, we looked at Z naught for loss C line is actually R plus J omega L of prime, G of prime plus J omega C of prime. This is the last thing that we looked at. If, if you recall it from our last video, this is what it is. Now we're going to look at something else. We know and Z naught when I have no resistance, which means my alpha is equals to zero, then Z naught loss less is just going to be simple L over C, which means this component, which is an attenuation constant, is not present, only this part is present. So we're going to manipulate this with respect to this. So we're going to rewrite these equations in terms of V of Z, right? I think I'm going to write it here. So I'm going to write this in terms of V of Z, all right? V O plus instead of gamma, since alpha is not present, I'm going to write it in terms of E to the negative J beta Z. Because what we're assuming is this, what we're assuming to drive voltage reflection coefficient is that my line, which is Z naught, is actually lossless. And the only change in voltage reflection coefficient that will occur is due to the mismatch of my load. So what, what we're assuming is this, that my piece of wire is lossless, right? It has no effect. So whatever I'm sending, my load, if it's matching with my ZS. So here we're also assuming ZS is equals to Z naught. And they are same thing. For right now, we're assuming this. And the only thing, the voltage reflection will only occur due to the mismatch of my load. All right? This is what we're saying. So we're writing it with e to the negative j beta z because my attenuation constant is zero plus v o minus e to the j beta z. All right. So I'm going to write i of z now, same thing with respect to my impedance that we calculated. As we know, impedance, these are my side notes, is v o plus, it's a ratio of your incident voltage divided by the ratio of the current, incident current. Or in the other direction, that's why I have this negative sign. On In the other direction, this is VO minus E times IO minus. So based on this, we're going to change this equation. So we're, because I want to write IOC with respect to uh, voltages. So we're going to write this. So if I were to look at it, if I were to solve for IOZ, IO, IO plus, so this is going to be VO plus divided by Z naught. So V O plus Z naught E to the negative J beta Z. The negative is coming to show the, that the impedance with, res with respect to the negative path minus V O minus divided by Z naught E to the J beta Z. Uh, this is very important to know. Uh, this is very important to understand this. All right. So far, so good. So. How do I come up with this? 
I know impedance is VO plus divided by I naught, and I want to write I of Z, I I naught or I Z with respect to voltages. That's why I have changed this, and I know impedance on the other side is going to be VO minus divided by Z naught. All right. So based on this, we're gonna we're gonna manipulate this equation a little bit more, and we're gonna come up with our voltage reflection coefficient definition. Okay. There is something else. So I am trying to calculate what is going to be my ZL, all right? And ZL, ZL, the load impedance right here. What is going to be my load impedance? Because we're saying my ZS is same thing as my Z0. There's no effect. Both of these things are same. The only change that will happen is with respect to ZL. And tell me if there is a change with respect to ZL load impedance, what will be the voltage reflection coefficient? This is what we're saying. So in order for me to find out what is my ZL, I need to know what is the load impedance, which is going to be VL divided by IL. So basically, what am I saying? I'm going to evaluate this length of this piece of wire where what at the value where my load is connected at. What at, at which end of the transmission line my load is connected to, which is probably this. And we're going to calculate ZL. So it's actually going to be a ratio of both of these guys evaluating Z at some particular length of L. All right. What should be the value at this point? What should be the value of Z? Okay. So it's like this. I have my source. This is my piece of wire. And this is my load. All right. Practically, this is how my circuit looks like. But when there is no attenuation due to my transmission line, so it's just like saying that both of these things are same and my load is directly connected like this, isn't it? So what should be that length? Means this length does not have, this piece of wire does not have any effect, does not have any effect on my load. The impedance of this piece of wire does not have any effect. So what should be the value of this? So the value of this is going to be zero, okay? Which means there is no effect. The only effect that will take place is with respect to the load impedance. So when I say this, so, so in, in place of Z, when you input 0, what will happen when Z is equals to 0? So let's evaluate this. Z is equals to 0. So in place of this, VO plus E to the negative J beta 0. In place of Z, I'm putting in 0, what this would become. So anything E raised to 0 would give me 1. And e raised to 0 would give me 1. Let me just write it down anyhow. e to the j beta 0. So that would be just e raised to 0 is just going to be 1. So the stop equation evaluated when z is equal to 0. And this current evaluated when z is equal to 0 is going to be vo plus divided by z naught e to the negative j beta 0 minus vo minus divided by z naught e to the j beta 0. So what this would become, this top equation would become vo plus plus vo minus divided by vo plus divided by z naught minus vo minus z naught. This is what the voltage equation would look like and the uh, current equation would look like. So just simply plugging this in here. VO plus, VO minus in place of VL divided by VO plus minus VO minus whole thing Z naught is equals to ZL. This is what my equation would become. All right. So when I solve this equation, let's solve this equation. Now we have this equation. Let's solve this equation for VO minus. Once I solve this equation for VO minus, this equation would become ZL minus Z naught divided by ZL plus Z naught. So when you solve for VO minus, when I solve this equation for VO minus, this would become VO minus is equal to ZL minus Z naught divided by ZL plus Z naught. So basically, this is what your equation would become.
Okay, so uh, when you solve this for V O minus, you will end up with this. Let's go to the solution process. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to move this. You're going to multiply both of these sides by Z V O plus minus V O minus. So this would become Z L V O plus minus V O minus. And you're going to multiply this guy by V O plus plus V O minus. One more step, Z L V O plus minus Z L V O minus. These are the steps you need to take in order for you to solve for VO minus. That would become Z naught VO plus plus Z naught VO minus. Simply move the like terms together. So ZL VO plus should go with Z naught. So I'm going to move this over here. So this would become ZL by also taking it out VO plus ZL. And when I move this minus Z naught. So when I move this over on this side, this would become minus and equals to when i move this and divide this so v o minus would become uh, z l plus z naught so this is how you calculate compute this so once you compute this so once you compute this you'll end up with this so i know something so let's move this on the other side v o plus divide by v o minus uh, sorry, VO plus, uh, VO plus, divide both, divide both sides by VO plus, we'll end up with VO minus divided by VO plus. Let's call this reflection coefficient. This whole thing is known as reflection coefficient, and this is what it means. What am I saying? What is reflection coefficient is, is the reflected voltage. So VO minus is actually your reflected voltage divided by the incident voltage. That's what the ratio is. So reflection coefficient is actually VO minus divided by VO plus. So your final definition would look something like this. So for reflection coefficient is going to be ZL minus Z naught divided by ZL plus Z naught. One more thing I have to say regarding reflection coefficient. Uh, this is only the magnitude. Reflection coefficient has a form that looks like this. Reflection coefficient is actually consists of the magnitude itself times the angle. So it has two things. So reflection coefficient consists of the magnitude and the uh, the angle associated with that reflected wave. So if my load is not properly matched, there is going to be a reflection, and that reflection is going to be ZL minus Z naught divided by ZL plus Z naught. This is the definition of your voltage reflection coefficient. Is this is very important parameter that we, when we check antennas, when we check our RF devices. When we check amplifiers to find out how much reflection is there, uh, we want this reflection to be, of course, zero. So everything is being absorbed by the load, but uh, but we want this to be as close to zero. But as we know, we don't have a perfect transmission line where you have Z naught when you don't ha where you don't have attenuation constant. So you want this to be as close to zero as possible when you're designing these things. So I hope you like this small tutorial on voltage reflection coefficient derivation. We're going to look at a couple of these examples in upcoming videos. And uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel.